The shift switch provides a choice of displaying the absolute axis reading or the relative axis reading. When the shift switch is off, the absolute reading for the selected axis is displayed. This reading is not affected by the zeroing potentiometer. Latching the shift switch on causes the selected relative axis to be displayed. This reading can be zeroed with the appropriate potentiometer. In our experiment, we wish to read the relative angle. The polarity switch allows reversing the sign of the displayed absolute or relative reading. In our experiment, we chose to have the polarity switch set to the normal position. With the indexes at this initial position, the display is zeroed. From the table, we see that the first set of readings requires that the indicator on the bottom index be aligned with 12 different graduations on the bottom index. First, 30 degrees, then 60 degrees, 90 degrees, and so on. However, the top index must always be positioned such that its zero graduation is aligned with the bottom index's indicator. To begin the measurement procedure, rotate the bottom index to 30 degrees. That is, rotate the bottom index clockwise until the bottom index's 30 degree graduation is aligned with the bottom index's indicator. Then rotate the top index counterclockwise until the top index's zero graduation is again aligned with the bottom index's indicator. Note that in this first step, the reflector was moved out of alignment with the optical unit, then returned to a position of nominal alignment in the second step. The first reading of this series is recorded in the table. For the second reading, rotate the bottom index clockwise until the bottom index's indicator is aligned with the 60 degree graduation. Rotate the top index counterclockwise until the top index's zero graduation is again aligned with the bottom index's indicator. The second reading of this series is now entered in the table. Repeat this procedure for the other measurement steps in this series. If the measurements have been properly performed, the total of all the measurement values should be zero. Because of the closure principle, this condition should be satisfied for all of the measurement series. From the table, we now see that the second set of measurements requires that the indicator on the bottom index again be aligned with 12 different graduations on the bottom index, but that the top index must always be positioned with its 30 degree graduation aligned with the bottom index's indicator. To prepare for the second series of measurements, the bottom index is positioned so that its zero graduation is aligned with its indicator. The top index is positioned such that its 30 degree graduation is aligned with the bottom index's indicator. The reflector is now realigned with the optical unit, the signal strength is adjusted, and the display is zeroed. As before, the bottom index is rotated clockwise until its 30 degree graduation is aligned with its indicator. The top index is rotated counterclockwise until its 30 degree graduation is again aligned with the bottom index's indicator. The first reading of this second series is recorded in the table. The bottom index is rotated clockwise until its 60 degree graduation is aligned with its indicator. The top index is rotated counterclockwise until its 30 degree graduation is again aligned with the bottom index's indicator. The value for this second step is read from the display and entered in the table. This procedure is repeated until the second series has been completed. At that point, the equipment is set up for the third measurement series and those measurements are made. This procedure is repeated until all of the 144 values in the table have been determined. You should have noticed the extreme fluctuations of the display readings. In addition to shielding the beam to minimize air path fluctuations, you should normally wear gloves to minimize thermal effects when handling the equipment. As outlined earlier in this lab, processing the data will yield the error in each 30 degree interval in both indexes. In this lab, we have discussed the principle of self-proving the division of a circle. We have also compared this method with the sine principle. 
Finally, we have demonstrated the self-calibration of two precision indexes using the division of the circle principle, a rank taylor hobson autocollimator, and two precision indexes. Given the following set of data, the homework assignment for this lab is to determine the error in each 30 degree interval of both precision indexes. All work should be shown. The lab write-up should follow the standard format consisting of the objective, procedure, results, and conclusion. The write-ups must be typewritten or legibly handwritten. Again, these write-ups are due at the beginning of the next lab.